Good morning. So already we have started our course on theory of abrasive machining. And abrasive machining or grinding has lot of similarity with machining process or cutting process. Already we have demonstrated that surface grinding and peripheral milling using a slab milling cutter or a side and face milling cutter, they have lot of similarity kinematically. This we have explained earlier. So what we would do is that estimation of material removal rate in different machining processes we will once again revisit. This would be very help helpful in understanding estimation of material removal rate, uh, rate in different grinding processes. We have only come across one grinding process till now which is surface grinding. In the course of the deliberation, maybe after a week or so, we will learn about other grinding processes and how to estimate the material removal rate in them. So, this is Shomitra Pal. This is part of the theory of abrasive machining course. So, this is part of theory of abrasive machining course. This is lecture number 1.2a. There would be several lectures in 1.2 series. Most of them, they would be short lectures instead of a one, one hour and you are expected to go through them before the previous class. Today, we are going to talk about MRR in turning. For talking about MRR in turning, this is the typical turning situation. This is the rotational speed of the spindle or it can also be denoted as rotational speed of the workpiece which is having a diameter D. This is the depth of cut. After one rotation of the job, the cutting tool is going to move ahead. So, the cut new position of the cutting tool would be somewhere here. So, as we machine, cutting tool is going to move ahead. In this direction and this would be the new position of the cutter uh, job and this distance would be the feed distance that we designate by s yes, depth of cut we designate by d and the cutting velocity would be pi d into n w. Whether you divide it by 1000 or not, that depends on whether this is in millimeter or meter. We express this to be in meter per minute. So, this has to be expressed in meter. If it is in millimeter, you need to divide it by 100. Now, let us have a look at the cutting front in three dimensions. So, where is that machine surface? This one is my machine surface, number one. Where is number 2? This is number 2. This surface is the unmachined surface. Whereas, this surface that I am trying to hatch carefully is the transient surface or machine surface number 3. In this particular diagram, this is your surface number 3, this is your surface number 1 and this is your surface number 2. So, this third surface is the transient surface which is being generated by this particular cutting edges which is called principal cutting edge. It is also called major cutting edge in some of the literatures. Now, how to estimate material removal rate? There are different ways of estimating material removal rate. I will try to uh, go through three of them. What we will do is that we will see that this transient surface, surface, what is the surface area of this one and how fast this surface area is moving in this particular direction that will give me the material removal rate. So, area into how fast it is moving as it has been shown here. It is moving at a rate of feed rate. How do I calculate feed rate? I calculate feed rate as feed per revolution into rotational speed that is rotations or revolutions per minute that will give me 
my feed rate is in and pi dt why is it pi dt because the diameter is pi d so the circumference is pi d and the annular thickness is t so pi dt into this you might say the surface number 3 is not the area is not exactly pi dt you are exactly correct this area that we are taking is projected area this area that we are taking is the projected area why we are taking projected area we will explain that in a video after maybe in the next video for the time being we are taking projected area which is nothing but pi d into t into sn if you reorganize this this becomes pi d n and s into t so it becomes vc s into t this is the standard formula of turning that you have learned earlier i am just revisiting to refresh your ideas how else can you uh, find out this is procedure number a this is procedure number b what we would do is that we will say this diameter is di this diameter is do so the annular area is pi by 4 do square my di square into s into n where why, what is this s into n this is nothing but my feed rate so feed rate has been plugged in here then i'll simplify this if i simplify it if i simplify it it becomes it becomes d0 minus di d0 plus di s into n pi by 4 so pi by 4 remains here this becomes 2d so average diameter this becomes s n is missing so i will put an n here this n is nothing but coming from this particular place and this is 2t d0 minus di is twice the annular thickness so this is 2t so this t this 2 this 2 and this 4 cancels out so you have pi dn into s into t so that way also you can get mrr equal to vc into s into t so in both the approaches you can calculate mrr in this fashion there is another third approach these two approaches are very easy to understand where is the third approach this is my third approach in third approach this is my workpiece which is rotating at ns or you can write is rotating at nw this is the diameter of the job this is the cutting tool this is the previous position of the cutting tool previous means one revolution earlier and this is the current position of the cutting tool and this has moved by a distance of s and there is a depth of cut of t i have hatched one area this green area is called chip load this chip load is nothing but t into s if i redraw it here this is the chip load and this distance is s this distance is t all i have done is that i have redrawn it in a larger scale and this area is being extruded because of the machining process this area is being extruded because of the machining process with a velocity v vc so it is nothing but vc into s into t so material removal rate be nothing but vc into s into t so this was our third approach with which we have shown that our approach c we have shown that material removal rate in turning can be expressed as vc into s into t and this is the most conventional formula for estimating material removal rate in the next video we will see how we can estimate material removal rate in other machining processes once we do that with this knowledge we would be able to estimate material removal rate in grinding processes which is the main focus of the course theory of abrasive machine thank you so much for your attention thank you